The Betatron is a type of cyclotron, a machine that can accelerate a beta particle, or in other words an electron, to very high speeds. But how does it achieve this acceleration? As we know, magnetic force is equal to current times the length of the conductor in the magnetic field. And if you run currents through a coil, you'll get a magnetic field through the center. This field can be further extended with another coil parallel to the first, which allows a more uniform magnetic field over a larger distance. The magnetic force generated by a coil alone is still pretty weak, so adding a large iron core will conduct the field a lot better. And finally, to understand how the Betatron works, we need to understand a few concepts. The first is magnetic flux, which is just the magnetic field divided by the area on which it is passing through. The second is induced electric fields. When you have a changing magnetic field passing through an area, it will create an electric field that will induce motion in any charged particles. Previous accelerators would speed up electrons with a long tunnel, either straight or coiled, but the path of the accelerated particle would never repeat or pass through itself, which means that they were limited by the length of the tunnel. So the problem the Betatron wanted to solve is, if you're aiming to send a charged particle into a consistent circular orbit, how do you prevent it from crashing into the sides? In the case of these donut-shaped particle accelerators, the magnetic field at the center of the tube will be equal to half the magnetic flux of a cross-section of the tube divided by the area of the circle on which the electron is traveling. If we say the magnetic flux is constant, the radius decreasing will lead to a greater electric field over a smaller area, and therefore a more powerful force sending it outward. This will make the electron travel faster, restoring its orbit. If the radius increases, though, the magnetic force created by the coils will be greater than the electric force, and it'll pull the particle into a tighter orbit. This might sound familiar because velocity selectors work using this exact same principle. In these cases, the magnetic field will force the electron inwards, but the stronger electric force over a smaller radius will accelerate the electron back to its original orbit. So then, how do you control these things? If you remember, electric fields are induced through variable magnetic fields and magnetic fields come from current flowing through coils. So essentially, you can get both from a single coil, but by changing the amount of current and the amount of loops in the coil, you could find a perfect balance. As you can imagine, this took quite a bit of trial and error, but this was the first particle accelerator to successfully keep a particle in constant motion without letting it drift off. So what did they do with this electron? Past accelerators, like the cyclotron, would use the force imbalances to eventually get the electron out of an exit hole. However, in the Betatron, the particle would essentially be held forever, unless you shut off the coil and let all of the momentum it's built up turn into linear velocity, launching it out a similar exit hole. Limitations of the Betatron The strength of the magnetic fields limits the maximum amount of energy that was imparted. This is because of the saturation of iron in the practical size of the magnetic core. The cyclotron, the successor of the Betatron, was able to overcome these issues. So there you have it. That's a brief summary of the Betatron and all the science behind it. I hope you enjoy it, and thank you for watching.